Hi, fishy folks from Minnesota. I came here for business and I asked some people on my Facebook page, Michael's Fish Room, what fish store should I go to? And a bunch of people said Tamed Waters, and it was pretty close. It's a tiny little shop with some great employees. Let's go inside and take a look. Hi guys. How's it going? This is Phil, the owner. How's it going? How long have you owned it? Uh, a little over two years. Well, like two years and a couple months now. Great little shop. And Fernando? Hey. What's the puppy's name? Mac. 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 Look at that dog. And what was your name? Luis. Luis. These guys are awesome. I've been in here talking for, I don't know, half an hour already, and I figured let's go. Let's do a tour. So the guys are going to take us take us along. So here we have a row of bettas. Literally. <laughs> and notice how much water they're kept in. Ha ha, betta, betta haters. Anyway, <laughs> what do we got? So these are grade A and grade B bettas. These are a really old Thai bloodline. You can find them in Malaysia. You can find them in Thailand, Vietnam. Super old school bloodline. They're like, I mean, these kind of bettas you don't want to put in like a community tank. These guys are pretty aggressive, you can see. Wow. But super cool. They got that old kind of like wild kind of bettas yeah. style body, yeah. but just red, almost like thorough old bread. Now, for the uneducated, why is the water dur dark? So the water is dark is because we use Indian almond leaves. So these bettas come from uh, small little ponds, puddles, I might say. And um, I, what I tell people is the most important things are, which is the opposite of what people are saying online, is Indian almond leaves and warm water. Uh, obviously clean water too. We change, we change these pretty often because right. it's such a small amount of water. But uh, yeah, in, the Indian almond leaves are the reason why the water is yellow and that adds tannins, antimicrobials, um, all sorts of benefits to the water, lowers the pH as well. Fantastic. And these are all imports? These are all imports, every single one. Very sweet looking bettas. So we got some more colorful ones down here. Yeah, so then you move on to the half ones. And it looks like this divider was already out, so these guys are already, you know. Yeah, I, I may or may not have taken a picture oh. of that red and, <laughs> and blue right. one. It may or may not be the actual uh, thumbnail for this video. Seriously, oh, that's <laughs> awesome. He's, he's super pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that black one. Yeah, so that's like a black, blue, bluish color. That super is cool. fantastic. These are called half moons. They got the longer tails. And the word placat means the shorter tail. See, I didn't even know that. Just got to come this guy right here. That guy's wicked. I just scared him. No, that's okay. Because I'm big and clumsy. That's okay. Look at this blue one. Oh, so one cards over, out. So over so here, there's a couple more half moon pairs. Yeah. Wow. These are called a, it's called a, a dragon, so that's the black around the outside, but this is a green body black dragon, which is super, super hard to come by. Uh, my, my business kind of slowed down for the summertime, but in the wintertime, these would all be sold out already. Here we got a wild in Bellas. Wild type in Bellas, might I say these are capabilities? Yeah. Very cool bettas. So these aren't your standard, everyday, ordinary. No. Let me go to PetSmart and buy a betta for no, six dollars. I actually have a couple of business partners in Thailand and Indonesia, and they go around to all the breeders. And let's say I wanted Dumbos like right here. Yeah. They will. They will literally travel a few hours away from their home just to find me the best pair of Dumbos, just because they'll go to that breeder. Wow. This pair is super nice as well as this platinum gold Dumbo pair. Certain bettas I have here are sold in pairs because I buy them in pairs. This, right. These would be some examples. I don't like break them apart. So the male is on the left? Male is on the left, yeah. So I usually put them on, like towards the middle of the male so that I can flare the males and show that off to some people too. Right. Very cool. Very cool. What do we got up here? So this would be a uh, yellow galaxy toy. You can see like the white speckles and stuff like that. That would be like the, the kind of galaxy part about that. And yellow toys, like that has cellophane in it, so it's kind of see-through a little bit. That's right. actually pretty hard to come by. It's not super common to see. This would be a Hellboy pair. Hellboy. Yeah, people love Sounds the Hellboys. like my kids. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. My kids are awesome. <laughs> that guy's awesome. Yeah. Wow. That, that, that's amazing looking. The reason why we keep the dividers in between is so that they're not stressed out all the time. I mean, right. This is actually really good for them to see them flaring at each other a little bit. Either males and females or males and males or whatever. Females and females. It doesn't matter. It's good for their energy levels, but you don't want to leave it off like that all day. Because then you'll come in and they're all stressed out, laying on their sides. Yeah, we don't want that. Good. And 
so people come in to buy breeding pairs, or they just want one for a, you uh, know, a little little something. I something. get a little bit of everything. A lot. I mean, I get business owners from like down or like office people that want one for their desk, and I got a lot of breeders that come from all over the Midwest. I get people from Milwaukee almost every single weekend. I'll play there. Chicago pretty often. Really? How far do you drive from Chicago? Like, what is it, eight, nine hours? To nine hours. Nine yeah. hours. And, and they come here for bets. Yeah. That's, like, that's, that's pretty guppies. sweet. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Our guppies as well. Yeah, guppies. All right, we're going to see guppies in a little while. So over here we have yeah. some shrimp. We do. We have some shrimp. All right. So the fish store is pretty old school, wooden racks, tanks on their sides, all manual water changes with air uh, driven sponge filters. Everything's pretty natural, kind of like my fish store. Except there might be more tanks here. So I was looking at these guppies before and the guys were saying you've had them for a while. Uh, that's kind of like the last trio of that type, and I needed the tank over on the guppy rack, so I just brought them over here. Honestly, I don't think people see them because that's like a super top quality trio of the legs for female. Yeah. You can see the females have the ribbon fins up there. Yeah. The male does not, which means you can still breed with them. Super cool trio. That's called platinum ribbon fin. Platinum ribbon fin. And some nice looking reds. Some nice looking reds, and then some neon yellow. So you'll hear a few different names for the yellows with that stripe on the back. You'll hear golden yellows or whatever. But I call these neon yellows. You can see that the bunch buried, for instance, this little lady right one or the other. Yeah, that is a cool fleco. How big will the sunshine fleco get? They get over a foot. They're, they're, they're big flecos. Yeah. I'm lying in the some places will say like 9, 10 inches, but I've seen them over a foot, so it's got a couple of clown yeah. loaches. What kind of fleco is that? That is actually just a sale from Gibbous Hips fleco, I believe. It's just, uh, it was a trade in. So they have like a higher top end, kind of right. like this. This is a rhino fleco right there. Yeah. Yeah. For those people that think Bristol are the best. Algae eater in the hobby, it's not true. The rhino buckle is the ultimate. The algae ultimate eater. algae eater. Alright, down here. I'll trade spots with you. Okay. We'll see what we got here. Some goofy looking goldfish. These are called Ryukins. They're freaky if you ask me. <laughs> I know, I used to not like goldfish, but those guys I kind of like, I'm not going to lie. Sorry guys, the puppy is sniffing the camera and the puppy will take precedence because I love dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we sold most of our South Americans out of here in the last week or so, and I do have another South American order coming in. I'm kind of bummed that you're not going to be here in a couple of days. Some yeah. rare Corridoras coming in, some rare Tetras, cool stuff like that. A lot of cool stuff I don't see every day. Yeah. So what do we have in this tank? We got Bolivian Rams. We got Lemia Perugiae, which I believe these are actually extinct in the wild, but unfortunately I do not have females winning with this group, so I got to try to... Obviously Greg Sage would probably be one to hit up for yeah. some females yeah. for that. We talked about Greg a little while ago. Greg's a cool dude. He's, right. he's getting kind of famous on YouTube. I used to talk to him like through email before like <laughs> anyone was talking to him like that. So I think it's kind of cool. Oh, right. He's good. Let's go around. We're going around the dog, guys. Now we're going to look at some guppies. Yeah, that sounds perfect. So these aren't for sale, but they are spectacular. Yeah, so these are albino kois, which you'll see occasionally. Um, but these are called the red ear albino kois. These are like the highest end strain for the kois right now. Um, the females have that beautiful red ear. Yeah. Um, this is my little breeding project. People actually get kind of ticked off that I kept these for myself and I'm not <laughs> selling them, but sometimes I like to have a little fun. And we do have some babies up on this, the side tank. Oh, you can very see some nice. Them in there. And I see there's moam. Yeah, a little bit of moam because we put a frozen brine shrimp and nappy in there. And yeah. uh, I mean, if you think about it, like this is like the sump kind of for that tank because we do plenty of water tanks yep. on that, so yep. the water stays super pure in there. I mean, I have moam in all my, I have moam like this thick in some of my pleco tanks, and, and people are like, Arr! and I'm like, look, I have a thousand babies. What do you want from me? Oh, seriously, that's, that's normal. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I show that off quite a bit here when I do videos. I'll say, check out this, these leaves degrading down here. This little bit of poop, supernatural. Just suck it out every once in a while. So Dumbo platinum red tails. Yep. Ribbon fin. Yep. So you see, here's like a beautiful male here with some big Dumbos. Yeah. Awesome. And then you see the females here, all pregnant as you can see, and they uh. They got some ribbon fins on them as well. Dumbo Tuxedo Red Cobras. Now these definitely have interested me, but I don't know if they're different enough than some other guppies I have already. Yeah, you probably have some red mosaics or something like yep, that. Yeah, exactly. So here you can see a trio I put down here. Um, just for a show, I did it not that long ago. Um, but you can see that you can see the cobra kind of pattern that goes almost yep. to the Dumbo ears. That's yep. a little yep. bit of the difference between the mosaics. 
So these have more of that cobra pad. Don't get me wrong, they're gorgeous looking guppies. Very similar to the mosaic, so like yeah, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go back to these. Yeah, those would be green hulks, or uh, some people would say green Moscow's, but green hulks are actually slightly different. What's the difference? Um, I, what I've noticed is the green hulks have the more of a green on the head and the tail, and then there's like a little darker patch throughout the body. Right. I've noticed green Moscow's are almost like the blue Moscow's, and they have the more of that blue. Yeah. But it, honestly, the names are just kind of who breeds it, and they'll make up their own name. Yeah, exactly. So and, and the more names in the name, the more expensive the guppies. That's, that's exactly true. That's right. I, I do the same thing. It's marketing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, now these are the guppies I probably will be buying from you. These are awesome. These are Dumbo uh, full gold 24 carats. The best view is if you look right straight down at these guys. Look at, look at that. That is spectacular. Let's pan back a little bit. There you go. Yeah. Now you can see that gold. So what I want to do with these, and i got to stop being so addicted to this hobby, but i got to, I want to set these out on my deck when these little planters out there with some floating plants. Literally no filtration or anything, and just like let them feed on mosquito larvae every once in a while, put some clay food in there. But can you imagine like a pond full of these and just looking from above and relaxing in your backyard? I just set up two 60 gallon ponds that drain into a uh, like a 20 gallon tub and then pumps back up like a waterfall. Oh, good. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. You're no right. fish in there yet because. You know, it's it may in New Jersey. It could be 90 or it could be 60, and it was like 48 the other day. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to, we'll have to ship you some good stuff. So, albino galaxy king cobras. Yep. These are so everyone knows that albinos are a little tricky in the guppy world. You'll hear that a lot. Yep. These have seemed to be super hardy, super sturdy. I don't know what percentage that will come out uh, exactly like the parents, but uh, some of the females have really nice patterns. You know, they kind of. It must be a newer strain because you don't see it's exactly the same on all right. females. Right, right, right. Well, but they do look really nice. They do. I, I don't like albinos. The, the only albinos I keep are albino plecos because people want them. I, yep. I think they're creepy. <laughs> I I'd much them. rather a lemon blue eye than an albino. Yeah. But anyway, people that's like the albinos. Yeah, they do. All right. Tuxedo koi's. So we've seen these. Another other. variant of koi. Um, you've probably seen these on yeah some of the YouTube channels. Yep. Um, super cool guppy. They got more of a dark in the body compared to some of the albinos. Yeah, yeah, I like the, the tuxedo koi's better than these albino the red albinos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These look like some young. Those are some young albino koi. Yeah. But good looking fish nonetheless. Yeah. 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 All right. Where to now? Let's see. Over here is a newer rack. So I built, me and my buddy built it, my buddy Dustin built it about literally like two months ago. Yeah. What's that? It's sat here kind of empty and we just store wood on there and it looks. Horrible, honestly, if anyone saw oh, that, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, now we finally got it set up. So we've got two 30 meters down there, which I originally planned to have tens run across. But tens on the bottom row are a pain. So anyone planning on doing that, I highly do not recommend it. <laughs> but you've got some beautiful Nemo female bettas all hanging out in there, and a bunch of, a bunch of nice plants. You'll see some curling off of the plants. Yeah. Like three or four female Can you there. still get 30 breeders? Do they still make them? They do, but they're super expensive. Like my wholesale price was pretty inexpensive, so I just kept them for myself. But I actually originally ordered those two and just thought I was going to try to sell them, but I was like, hey, this would be perfect for here. Yeah. And now I realize I probably, I don't know, the price would have been more. So I had a 30 breeder that I got for $30 at a flea market. Are you serious? That's what and I had cool. it set up for a while, and then I took it down to put, you know, three more tanks in its spot, and it was sitting in the basement, and of course it broke. Uh, yeah. Well, I wasn't crying or anything, I swear. Over. Yeah, all right, so so more plants. More plants, we've got Nubius, Golden, Nubius, Man of a T. There's a giant beta in there. He's a Nemo giant, which is kind of a newer variant. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, he's, he's super wicked. Very nice. We've got some Camarillas Texanus Blue, which were bred by Fernando over there. Fernando's Aquatics on Facebook. That's Fernando's Aquatics. I'll put links to everything down below, to the store, to Fernando's Aquatics. Anything they want me to do, because i got to be honest, super friendly here, guys. Oh, thank you. What? These, okay, this is embarrassing. I know my fish very well, but I do not know the scientific name of these, and that's why I didn't put a price or a name up. I just imported <laughs> these in. So I'm going to try to do a little more research on these, but they remind me of between like a loach and a catfish cross. I ordered them as a loach out of Indonesia, I believe, and but they they have the real spiky spines on the side fins. When I like lifted one up, I got both. So I was like, they have to be somewhat like within a loach or a catfish family. Yeah, pretty uh, cool though. I mean, I always say I'm a dumb guy with a camera. I know guppies and some plecos. Other than that, I I don't. I mean, I keep a flower horn and I know a little bit about angels, but that's pretty much it. Yep. Yep. Chili rasboras. Chili rasboras. Um, usually a pretty spendy fish. 
for uh, nano fish, but I, I brought I brought in like 300 this time, and I priced them very pretty well for nice. Three. Yeah, Fernando was telling me you you guys you try to price them right to keep people in the hobby and get people involved, and that's that's awesome. Yeah, I mean that's that's what we got to do. I I do this purely out of love, honestly. Like people may not believe me that I do that, because but I work still full time as a nurse. That, that's so right. That's, you that's you told me that. I, yeah. Believe me, I know what it's like to have two full time jobs. Yeah, I guess pretty crazy yeah it does these are Northrop Ranchius retrovi I don't know if I said that right um, but these are annual catfish so they do die after a year year and a half yeah just every year so what people do is they harvest the eggs in a little bit of peat moss dry them out for a good two or three months and then the second you put water back in there they hatch like almost like sort of like killies yep they are killies yep wow fantastic these are some SP Rasboros. Um, these are some Gardnerite Golden Killies. Yeah. These are hard to pick up on camera, but they end up they do end up getting a beautiful, beautiful golden color. I can see some of them have like a red stripe in some of the. Yeah, that would be the males, like that one you're focusing on now. That he, thing is adorable. Yeah, he'll he'll get an even nicer than that. Still pretty young. Yeah. All right. What else? We got white cloud mountain minnows up here. That's always a favorite. Yep. Throw them outside. Good for the ponds. Yep. yep. These are pretty cool. You, if you look up this name, you'll see how bright they can get because the colors are pretty not very bright right now. But these are micro reservoir rebusins. These are actually endangered in the wild. I got them captive bred from a breeder in Asia. Super cool. If anyone wants to try breeding these, maybe for that cares that cow or whatever yep, it is, that's pretty cool. cool. Pseudo mugle pass guy. It's a dwarf. Uh, I think it's a dwarf rainbow fish. Oh. That you probably know. And then a dolphin quarries. Nice little quarries. Yeah. These are cherics from Indonesia. There's actually a few different types in here. These are wild caught, and this is kind of like a hot item right now is these wild crayfish out of Indonesia because they're very hard to get your hands on, but I got a collector that's a collection for me. Nice. More of the same. These are you can lobsters. see a, a molt right there. Believe it or not, that colorful thing is a molt. With the dwarf crayfish, you'll see it's perfectly clear like a shrimp but these crayfish it's like a thick mold with color in it so that's kind of neat yeah tiger shovel tiger nose. shovel nose are there we got some electric blue rams which they're so you can see i'll write quarantine in here because i don't have a lot of quarantine tanks so i'll pull my tank my fish through quarantine in in display which is kind of sucks sometimes when people ask a lot of questions right right but i hope people appreciate what i'm doing for them uh, hopefully if they're smart they do yeah yeah so some celestial pearl daniels. Yeah, also good. Of course. Also good for outside. All right. One more time. Plants right All there. Tap. Plants and arrows. Yep. So we got albino arrows down here. We got an albino sturgeon. Um, How big is that sturgeon going to get? The sturgeon get between, like, probably closer to four feet. This is one of the dwarf species, technically. <laughs> but obviously, that's not very dwarf still. A lot smaller than the 12 foot cousins. Yeah, for sure. I donated one to the Great Lakes Aquarium in Duluth as well, so that they're going to one up right now to have on display. That's pretty cool. How much is a sturgeon? That guy's four hundred. He's pretty spendy. Yeah, yeah. How much are the albinos? The albinos are five hundred. If you buy two or more, four fifty. That's not bad. Yeah, albino arrows kind of. They used to be like over a grand for a baby one, so they kind of came down in price. Yeah, I did a, a albino fish store tour only in Japan. Seriously, they had awesome. all, all the ones that we want, yeah. they had there. Like ginormous ones, like the size of your leg. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally dope. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Angels? Yep, these and would be uh, green smokes. I believe they're bred in like the Czech Republic or something like that. Kind of an interesting color on them. It's kind of hard to pick up the color. They got that bronze yep. kind of green head. Yep, yep. I mean, to the, the late person, they probably look like they're they're washed out but they're yeah. not no yeah. it's actually quite interesting for me to see those because i see a lot of koi i see a lot of these marbles over here but those i do not see very often no and you have bettas in every tank i do have bettas all over the place and you can see that they do great in the community tank yeah um, with yeah. tetras up here yeah so, every once in a while i will say you get one that's a jerk and that's just like humans you know every once in a while there's one that's a I jerk i mean like i'm a jerk <laughs> no, but you guys not. are nice <laughs> you are not those are Indo indonesian tiger damnoids those are captive bred also. How major. big will those get? Those get monstrous. I yeah. got a big yeah. one in the pond. But. We'll see the pond at the end. There you go. So little angels. We have little angels. There's some uh, quarries at the bottom. Barbados, actually. They're kind of different than a quarry. 
And now, I love this thing. I, I, I would want it just to breed plecos in, but what is it? So fun fact, this is a, some sort of deep blue, but I know they were discontinuing it, so I just grabbed one, even though it was super expensive my wholesale price. I was like, I'll never be able to sell this. So I set it up. We actually just set it up a couple days ago. And the plan is to have rainbow shiners in there, which I don't know if you've ever seen those, but they're super cool. Yeah, yeah. So one of those fish in the hobby that people are like, I don't know. But then you look and you're like, oh, oh yeah, 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 like, wow. Very cool. So these are these are kind of hard to get at for my catch for catching. So I try to just make that one a display. Yeah. So so guys, look at this wood. It's like like all the way up there, all the way up there. I mean, it's super cool. Those are Tucano tetras in there. Tucano tetras. I've never even heard of those. Yep. Well, as well as a pair of histogramma. Try fishing. I like the histogramma. All right. What else? Where are we going? Let's go over here. Wait, wait. Can we talk about the sandbox for a yeah, second? Because I asked Fernando what's it for, and he explained it's for. So it's for when you're aquascaping, which I'm still trying to narrow in who I'm going to use to supply me for aquascaping supplies. But um, when you get it ready, when you get like some stone that you're ready to, you know, to buy or whatever, you can place them in different places here and see how it'll look in your aquarium. Wow, that's pretty cool that you let people do that. Yeah. So if someone had like a 40 meter, they could obviously do it like the long way here. Right. Like, oh wow, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, we got some ginormous tanks over here. We got giant bettas. <laughs> giant in the ginormous tanks. Light's pretty bad over here. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the light is pretty dark over I, here. I notice uh, the camera's having a hard time focusing. So. Is that, it's probably, yeah. usually I have this whole system over here, which is dirty. It used to just go be a discus system. So that's usually lighting up this side over here. These are real Atabapo pikes. If you ever see these when they're breeding, they're bright, bright red. Probably one of the reddest fish in the entire hobby. It's really? like a predator, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. In the back. That's also one oh, back okay. there. Yep. Just chilling. Yep. All right. Um, over here, we got some random pistos in here, as well as some chubby peppermint plecos, which is kind of cool. It looks like that other peppermint pleco in the hobby, but these are like the chubby version. Chubby peppermint pleco. Got a koi angel as yeah, well as another pair of pistols that breeze in there constantly. I like the tank. It's just got plants floating, yeah. some stuff on the bottom. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm glad yeah. like, people like you like that, because some people come in here and probably think it's a mess. Yeah, well, but we're idiots. <laughs> these are black. I know, right? These are black emperors. Those are pretty nice. I actually got a bad review because I wanted to keep that as a display up there, and someone, yeah. someone wanted the floating plants over there, but I had the same floating plants down in another tank. They gave me a bad review. Oh. <laughs> That's how people are. Yeah, yeah. Them. Tell me about it. All right. So, so we look at the pond. Yeah, let's check out the pond. I mean. We got some koi, obviously. There's koi in here. Remember the dad noise we were talking about? Those little guys right, right here? Right there. Right there. Yep. Yep. Believe it or not, I know what those are. They're awesome. I don't know why I do, but I know what they are. They're awesome. Yeah. Now, yeah, you, can, said, you said that big yellow one is 14 years old? That one, yeah, it's a little over 14 years old, actually. What's his name? Uh, we, yes, don't, no, sorry. Don't give me the same look like that. <laughs> I should have I named this fish, shouldn't I? Everyone says that, too. Yeah, yeah. We got arowana in there. It's actually a silver arowana, but it's got like highlighted red. That's pure wild caught. I didn't really even cool. see that arrow before. Yeah. And a uh, red tail. Red tail. There's a couple in here. And there's, this is a Lyrius pictus catfish. It's like a high fin self and catfish. Really That's hard to cool. find. How big is a pond? How many gallons do you think? When it's filled up all the way, because we use this water sometimes for filling other jars and tanks, and we u really utilize this pond to make it for our benefit. Uh, but when it's filled up all the way, it's almost a thousand gallons. Wow. Which is cool. far too small to This is just temporary. Yeah. I know all those people are going to be Oh, yeah, they'll be oh, haters. How could they keep that in only a thousand gallons? Oh, yeah. There's, yeah, a, there's, a, there's, look, a, big, there's a bigger pond. They look the like they're not right doing now. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah clearly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're swimming in uh, All right, guys, anything you want to say in closing? Thanks, you guys. Thanks for tuning in to his channel, which is awesome. I watch it. Like, usually on my lunch breaks, actually, I work at the hospital, so always tune in and check out you guys' videos. Well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so, absolutely. Tamed Waters on Facebook? Tamed Waters on Facebook. There should be a website soon, and we're growing pretty fast here, so you can order fish from us. Yeah, check it out, guys. Okay.